Hey there, this is Erica from Ever Educating, and this channel is teaching tips, tools, ideas, and resources for college instructors. Recently, I've been doing a lot of ed tech tutorials as well as talking about hybrid or online teaching. And so today I thought I'd bring it back to a more general teaching tip. Yes, it works for hybrid or online or those kind of classrooms, but really it's just in general ideas for how to structure your class sessions. So if you're scrambling with, you know, I don't want to be too repetitive, here are five different ways you could potentially structure your week so that you're not being, you know, too boring or repetitive uh, with your students. And so just as a disclaimer, I usually teach twice a week. So on a Tuesday, Thursday, or Monday, Wednesday schedule. But obviously there are classes that are Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or those that are just once a week. And so in this case, most of these ideas are in three parts. And so I usually do two parts on Tuesday and then one part on Thursday. But of course, if you do Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you can just split it into three, right? Um, or if you have just a three hour class period, you can split it up from start to finish. Okay, but the first idea here is basically having starting with lecture and then an individual activity and then a whole class discussion. Okay, so in the first part of Tuesday, hey, here's some information that you need for context, for background, for being able to use the right language in this classroom, right? And so you do, I do a little lecture. Hopefully it will be a bit interactive, so it's not just me talking the whole time, but I have using maybe Pear Deck in order to get some interaction with my students. But a good chunk of the day is here's the lecture material. And then after that, I say, okay, so you have all this background, you have all this info, here's an, an activity for you to do you know, by yourself. Take some time and start filling out these questions or answering this prompt or doing this thing. And the rest of that class period is just individual work. They can ask me questions because I'm there with them. And so that is a Tuesday session. And then Thursday, it's a whole class discussion. So we discuss what they did in that small activity. Perhaps they finished it for homework if they didn't finish it in class. And so Thursday, I basically prep to, to facilitate a discussion on what we, dis we did on Tuesday, right? Their individual activity can continue to that lecture material. And so obviously Thursday, you know, I definitely have prep questions or prep things to say in order to facilitate the whole class period. But obviously the individual activity can help as a grounding force for the discussion. So that's my first way of doing it, right? Lecture, individual activity, whole class discussion. What happens if you know you need almost a whole class period or the whole class period to lecture though on Tuesday? In that case, I just do the individual activity for homework, right? So I have, all right, you know, this first class period is just all this information that you need for this class. And again, try to make it interactive, pause to see if there's any questions. And like, all right, we cover all this. Now for homework, do this thing. And then we're gonna discuss your homework and kind of talk about all this information on Thursday's class, in Thursday's class. And so in that case, you know, you can have more lecture time and then a homework activity that preps for Thursday's discussion, okay? So the key here basically is having them do something so that when you get to Thursday and you say, okay, what are your thoughts on this? Or explain that. They're not like scrambling to come up with it immediately, right? They actually have, okay, I already did this kind of brainstorming, this kind of activity before we even got to Thursday's class, either in class on Tuesday or for homework Tuesday night leading up to Thursday okay so a slight tweak of the organization but obviously very similar as well if you're fully online or fully face-to-face -face, then this third pattern obviously is my favorite and that's lecture to small group activity to whole class discussion okay so small groups is something I love doing in my literature writing classes but it's basically impossible when I'm doing a hybrid course a high flex course so what I do instead is if you're face to face or if you're online you know you can do all right here's a lecture and then a good chunk of Tuesday should be the small group activity, right? If your lecture is very long, I wouldn't recommend this because, you know, groups, it takes a while to get moving around, to introduce each other, you know, each other to themselves and say, okay, you know, what are we doing here? That awkward silence, right? You know, a group activity always has those kind of bumps in the road. So I recommend it if your lecture is very short and then you have a, a good chunk of time to have the small group activity. And then again, Thursday, you discuss it as a class, maybe have a representative from each group present their findings or have each member of the group present, you know, an answer to a different question that you gave them. So in this case, it's my favorite approach. Uh, and that's short lecture, small group discussion, 
whole class discussion. Now, what if you reach a point where there's no lecture material needed, right? You did all lecture in the beginning of the semester, now it's basically doing activities and having discussions in your classroom. In that case, obviously, the most common one you've probably already heard of is a think-pair-share approach. And so in this case, if you don't know what it is, you have students think individually for a while about a prompt, then they pair up with a partner and discuss it with them, and then you have sharing with the whole class what their thoughts are on whatever it is that you've given them to do. So again, works best when you're either fully online, where you can use breakout rooms, or fully in person, where they can pair up very easily. Uh, but obviously it can be done in the hybrid classroom, but it might be something that you, I would say, do without, because if you do the pair part of it, it's gonna be very loud in the classroom because they're, they're distant, right? And so they have to share with everybody else at the same time. So I don't do it in my classes currently, uh, but I do think it works well for fully face-to-face -face or fully online. And so this again, the think part, I recommend having them write down, right, with their thoughts, not just think in your mind for a few minutes about this, have them say, okay, do a bullet point list, right? Write down these things, find this thing in this book, right? And so they work individually for a few minutes, so they have material prep for them, and they're like, okay, now partner up with somebody or you know, groups of three and discuss this element of what you just found and have them do that for a chunk of time, that might be all of Tuesday. And then again, Thursday, you have the share, the whole class discussion. Now, perhaps the think part is very long. You need the whole class period for them to answer all these prompts. Then obviously you do the pair and share for Thursday, because I don't recommend doing the pairing for homework, like, hey, talk to your partner that you're gonna assign to at the end of the class and discuss it, because you, know, you have no idea what their life is like outside of the classroom. So I would just say, do the think on Tuesday and the pair and share on Thursday, or you can go straight from thinking to sharing, right? Don't, don't do the small group aspect, just have them do the individual activity on Tuesday and the whole class discussion on Thursday. So in my classes, you know, when I'm teaching literature, there comes a point where if we're reading a novel and we're reading it in like over four days, then in week two, basically, you know, by Tuesday, they'll have read the whole book. You know, at the latest, because I, I usually do like a third, a third, a third, so that's Tuesday, Thursday, Tuesday, and then that final Thursday is just a discussion of the whole book, right? And so obviously in that second week, there might not be that much need for individual work or like small group work, because now you have, you know, they've read the whole novel at that point in my case. And so another option is just having, okay, Tuesday and Thursday, we're having just whole class discussions, right? There's no small group work, there's no thinking individually, you've had the whole novel read at this point we've discussed the, the first two thirds in detail last week let's just have whole class discussions on both days but obviously design them differently okay so maybe they have where they have to present certain information on tuesday and then thursday it's just you know a round table discussion maybe you do the socratic circle right or the fishbowl activity so you might just have a design differently but both days are just whole class discussions and so that works really well once you already have again all lecturing down you spend a lot of time with a certain concept or a certain person a certain process and maybe spend the whole week just having whole group discussion right whole class discussion to really get that sense of community going and making sure that everybody's interacting with one another there are other class session designs, of course, and if you have your personal favorite that wasn't listed here, let me know below, because you can obviously learn from each other as well. But these are just a few that I think are really key for having, you know, don't just have the same structure every single week. Uh, that can also be repetitive for your students and for yourself. But you can have, okay, you know, I'm gonna do this first type, and then I'm gonna do this similar second type. And then now I'm gonna do the only the whole class discussions, and then kind of, you know, vary the approach to, to structuring your class sessions to make it more engaging for everybody involved. So if you found this video helpful, do click like, let me know, that can really help. And again, if you have suggestions for designs, let us know in the comments. If you have a personal favorite from this list, which one is that one? I'd be curious to know that as well.